Good day everyone! Today we're going to tackle about a lesson in number theory which is entitled arithmetic function. Firstly, I'm going to introduce to you the learning objectives that the students must achieve by the end of the lessons. So here are the learning objectives of the lesson. First, describe arithmetic function. Then, Evaluate a positive integer n by finding its number of divisors, the tau function of n, the sum of divisors, the sigma function of n, and number of integers k in the range k is greater than or equal to 1 but lesser than or equal to n for which the GCD n and k is equal to 1 which is the phi function of n. Then, internalize learning of concepts on arithmetic function through application on different positive integers. In number theory, an arithmetic arithmetical or number theoretic function is a real or complex valued function f of n defined on the set of natural numbers that expresses some arithmetical property of n. The commonly known arithmetical function in the study of number theory is Euler's Tuchent function or Euler's Phi function. Euler's Tuchent or Phi function or the Phi function of n is an arithmetic function that counts the totatives of n, that is the positive integers less than or equal to n, that are relatively prime to n. Thus, if n is a positive integer, then, the phi function of n is the greatest number of integers k in the range k is greater than or equal to 1 but lesser than or equal to n, for which the greatest common divisor of n and k is equal to 1. The Tuchent function is a multiplicative function, meaning that if two numbers m and n are relatively prime, then the phi function of m and n is equal to the phi function of m multiplied by the phi function of n. For example, let n equals 9. So the greatest common divisor of 9 and 3 is equal to the greatest common divisor of 9 and 6, which is also 3. So the greatest common divisor also of 9 and 9 is equal to 9. The other 6 numbers in the range k is greater than or equal to 1 but lesser than or equal to 9 that is 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8 are relatively prime to 9. Therefore, the phi function of 9 is equal to 6. As another example, the phi function of 1 is equal to 1 since the greatest common divisor of 1 and 1 is equal to 1. Leonhard Euler introduced the function in 1763. However, he did not at that time choose any specific symbol to denote it. In 1784, Euler studied the function further and then chose the Greek letter shown to denote it. He writes, this, this symbol for the multitude of numbers less than d and which have no common divisor with it. The standard notation the phi function of a comes from the Gauss 18-1 treatise Disquisitionis Arithmetic A. Gauss, however, doesn't use parentheses around the argument and writes the phi function of a. Thus, it is usually called the Euler's phi function or simply the phi function. The disquisition is arithmetic A is the Latin for arithmetical investigation. That is a textbook of number theory written in Latin by Carl Friedrich Gauss in 1798 when Gauss was 21 and first published in 1801 when he was 24. 
It is notable for having had a revolutionary impact on the field of number theory as it not only made the field truly rigorous and systematic but also paved the path for a modern number theory. In 1879, J.J. Sylvester coined the term Tuchin for this function, so it is also referred to as the Tuchin function, the Euler Tuchin or Euler's Tuchin. Jordan's Tuchin is a generalization of Euler's. So the cotuchent of n is defined as n minus phi function of n, that is the number of positive integers less than or equal to n that are divisible by at least one prime that also divides n. So there are three conditions in finding phi function of n. So firstly, if n is prime already, then the phi function of n is equal to n minus 1. For example, n is equal to 7. So the phi function of 7 is equal to 6. Second, if n is equal to p and q, where p and q are both prime numbers. So the phi function of n is equal to the quantity of p minus 1 multiplied by the quantity of q minus 1. Example, n is equal to 21. So automatically, the factors of 21 are already prime, which are 7 and 3. So the phi function of 21 is equal to the quantity of 7 minus 1 multiplied by the quantity of 3 minus 1. And the phi function of 21 is equal to 12. Third, if n is equal to a times b and are both composite numbers. So the phi function of n is equal to the quantity of 1 minus 1 over p sub 1 times the quantity of 1 minus 1 over p sub 2 and so on until 1 minus 1 over p sub k multiplied by n. Let n be a positive integer. So we consider n as a positive integer, not even 0 or negative. So if the prime factorization of n is greater than 1, then the num number known as Euler's phi function or Euler's tuition function, which is the number of positive integers less than n relatively prime to n is the phi function of n is equal to the quantity of 1 minus 1 over p sub 1 multiplied by the quantity of 1 minus 1 over p sub 2 and so on until 1 minus 1 over p sub k multiplied by n. So this will be equal to p sub 1 to the power of e 1 to the power of negative 1 times p sub 2 to the power of e 2 to the power of negative 1 and so on until p sub k is to the power of e times k to the power of negative 1 times the quantity of p sub 1 minus 1 and so on until p sub k minus 1. We'll proceed now with the tau function. If we say tau function, it is the number of divisors of function denoted by this symbol, which is defined by setting tau function of n equal to the number of positive divisors of n. Pi a tau is a multiplicative function, and that is the quantity of a i plus 1. So, here's the formula for the tau function. The number of divisor n is the tau function of n is equal to the quantity of e sub 1 plus 1 multiplied by the quantity of e sub k plus 1. The sigma function. The theorem for the sigma function is if p is prime and n is any positive integer, then the sigma function for p to the power of n is p to the power of n plus 1 minus 1 all over the quantity of p minus 1. So let's consider the, the following uh, for the formula also for the sigma function. 
the sum of the divisors of n is sigma function of n is equal to the quantity of p sub 1 to the power of e sub 1 minus p sub 1 to the power of e sub 1 minus 1 times and until plus 1 until there are two base for which there are also exponents so overall how this how they are derived how this sigma function is being derived is equal to the the quantity of p sub 1 to the power of e sub 1 plus 1 minus 1 all over p sub 1 minus 1 multiplied by the quantity of p sub 2 to the power of e sub 2 plus 1 minus 1 all over p sub 2 minus 1 and so on now let's proceed with the examples let's consider the following for the first example let n be equal to 36 the phi function of 36 is equal to the phi times the quantity the quantity of 2 squared 3 squared so we'll have the formula for a phi function since there are two bases as well so let's consider this formula the 36 ti times the quantity of 1 minus 1 half times the quantity of 1 minus 1 third so overall the phi function of 36 is equal to 12 when you are going to evaluate the equation so let's proceed now with the tau function of 36 it is equal to e sub the quantity of e sub 1 plus 1 multiplied by the quantity of e sub k plus 1 is equal to let's have an exponent 2 plus 1 multiplied by the quantity of the exponent of 3 2 plus 1 so overall the tau function of 36 is equal to 9 so we're considering here the number of divisors let's proceed now with the sigma function of 36 let's consider the formula the quantity of p sub 1 to the power of e sub 1 plus 1 minus 1 all over p sub 1 minus 1 multiplied by the quantity of p sub 2 to the power of e sub 2 plus 1 minus 1 all over p sub 2 minus 1 so we have p sub 1 and p sub 2 2 and 3 let p sub 1 is equal to 2 and p sub 2 is equal to 3 so we'll evaluate the expression the quantity of 2 squared plus 1 minus 1 all over 2 minus 1 multiplied by the quantity of 3 squared plus 1 minus 1 all over 3 minus 1 then we'll simplify the quantity of 2 cubed minus 1 all over 1 multiplied by the quantity of 3 cubed minus 1 over 2 let's make it more simpler the quantity of 8 minus 1 over 1 27 minus 1 over 2 is equal to 91. Let's proceed with the second example. The What about n is equal to 100? Firstly, we have the phi function of 100. The phi function of 100 is equal to phi 2 squared 5 squared. So we have here the two prime factors 2 and 5. Yeah, so let's using the formula it is equal to 100 times 1 minus 1 half multiplied by the quantity of 1 minus 1 fifth so it is equal to 100 times 1 half times 1 fifth so overall the phi function of 100 is equal to 10 proceeding with the tau function of 100 using the formula the quantity of e sub 1 plus 1 multiplied by the quantity of of e sub k plus 1 so we have two we have on the com a common exponent for both which is 2 so it's, it is equal to 2 the quantity of 2 plus 1 multiplied by the quantity of 2 plus 1 so we have our tau function of 100 is equal to 9 for the sigma function of 100 with the use of 
the formula for sigma function, we're going to evaluate the sigma function of 100, then substitute the quantity of 2 squared plus 1 minus 1 all over 2 minus 1 multiplied by the quantity of 5 squared plus 1 minus 1 all over 5 minus 1. Let's simplify the quantity of 2 cubed minus 1 over 1 multiplied by the quantity of 5 cubed minus 1 over 4. So the sigma function for 100 is equal to 217. Third example, if n is equal to 50. So if n is equal to 50, we have here the phi function of 50 is equal to the phi function of 2 to the power of 1 times 5 squared is equal to 50 times 1 minus 1 half multiplied by 1 minus 1 fifth. So the phi function of 50 is equal to 5. The tau function of 50 with the use of the formula for the tau function, the quantity of e sub 1 plus 1 multiplied by the quantity of e sub k plus 1 and we're going to substitute since we have 2 to the power of 1 since it is already considered as 1 even if there's no visible exponent it is already considered as 1 so the quantity of 1 plus 1 multiplied by the quantity of 2 plus 1 so the tau function of 50 is equal to 6 now let's proceed with the sigma function of 50 sigma function of 50 is equal to using with the use of the sigma function formula we'll be going to substitute the values so the quantity of 2 to the power of 1 plus 1 minus 1 all over 2 minus 1 since the, the base is 2 and we have 1 as its exponent for the base multiplied by the quantity of 5 squared plus 1 5 as the base and 2 as its exponent added by 1 then minus 1 overall all over 5 minus 1 let's have to let's simplify 2 squared minus 1 all over 1 times 5 cubed minus 1 all over 4 then let's make it simpler the quantity of 3 minus 1 over 1 multiplied by the quantity of 125 minus 1 over 4 so the sigma function of 50 is equal to 62 so that's all for today that's all for the lessons about arithmetic function and I hope you have heard, learned a lot about the video discussion for today. Thank you.